Hey everybody, it's Chris from Prepare Mind 101. I got a knife with me today that a lot of people have asked me to review, and this one is not mine. This is actually uh, one of my best friends, and actually third cousin, uh, Danny's knife. And this is the Habilis Bush Tool. This was the original design that uh, Habilis Bush Tool put out, and it's one of my favorites. They got they got a bunch of different designs. I like this one. I like uh, I think it's called the is it the Wanderer. Yeah, they got the wonder. Looks pretty interesting to me, but this was actually designed to do a lot of tasks. And since I got William Myers from Manus Outdoors out here with me today, and he is a lot more familiar with the bush tool than I am, I figured he would be better off to describe the features of this knife to you and let you know what this thing does. All right, so yeah, like Chris said, this knife has a lot of key features that was built right into the knife. And uh, we're not talking about a knife that has like all kinds of crazy different design features. This really doesn't, you know. Uh, a knife that comes to mind would be um, like the Tom Brown Tracker. You know, that, that knife was built with all kinds of different features in it. That's not really what I would call this knife. You know, this knife was made, it just has a, a, a regular roach belly, which is really, really nice. There's nothing that gets in the, in the way and obstructs the cutting uh, surfaces. If you can see, it is kind of a modified scanty grind. It actually has a, uh, an, a secondary bevel put on it right here. So when you are sharpening this knife, you, you know, eventually you will sharpen through that secondary bevel and then what you're left with is a scanty grind. So that was a, de a design feature that was uh, put into the knife. Well, I don't know that it came with the secondary bevel. I put the secondary bevel on there. Well, then he already sharpened through it because yeah, Habilis bush tools are, are made with a secondary bevel. It's oh. got a, a modified scanty grind and uh, it's just like this. So if, you, if it didn't have this when you got that knife, you basically put a factory edge on it because that's exactly how they're made. <clears throat> if you can see right here, this uh, little recess, this was made to basically give you added control when um, uh, batoning with this knife. So it acts kind of like an anvil. What that does is it keeps the knife straight and level as you're going down. And uh, basically it prevents the, the cock up and stuff like that that, you, that happens with some of these knives. We have a couple pieces of small wood here, nothing major. We just... Uh, kind of give you a small demonstration of how this uh, knife batons. I'm going to switch over to this hand here. You know, great for busting up kindling. It also has a super, super fine edge on it for making things like feather sticks. I mean, that's just an amazing edge that this knife has it. And like I said, Chris pretty much put a factory edge right back on it. If it was already down to that scandy edge, <clears throat> which I don't mind a scandy grind anyway. Work sharp. Work sharp. As you see, that's pretty, pretty decent feathers just within, what, 10 seconds. You know, I can get those to go up with the ferro rod just as they are right there. But, you know, obviously this, this knife will handle wood that's a lot bigger than that. If you can see, it's got a little ferro rod divot right there. And what that is designed for is for, you know, use it with a ferro rod. And when you're striking up, that funnel basically, it, it has a funneling effect that just showers and concentrates your uh, your ferro rod sparks and also when you do use a recess like this um, you're kind of accessing more of the ferro rod you know instead of a flat surface which is only doing one side of it you're kind of if you have a ferro rod that will accommodate that mine doesn't it's a little bit too big but if you have a ferro rod that accommodates that slot you're accessing more of the ferro rod getting more bang for your buck as you can say um, and like I said it does kind of funnel the sparks to a certain point to where you want them. Uh, the the handles are G10. Uh, they really really like G10. You know it's water resistant. You know it's not going to corrode underneath or anything like that. It does come with a ferro rod, a bearing block right there. And the funny thing about it is they did design this this uh, recess right here for patoning, but it, it just has so many more uses. You know you, it gives you a decent little purchase on it. 
to where you can use it as a draw knife. And I, I already I know people say you should never use a knife to cut towards you. Well, if you're making like self bows or something like that, you put the bow in the vise and you use a draw knife. They've been using them for centuries to draw the wood towards you. It's not like you're going to, you know, open up your guts or anything. You just got to be careful what you're doing. <coughs> Look up draw knife. I mean, that's it. they're used for that. Uh, the pommel was designed for you know processing vegetation, cracking walnuts, what have you, things like that. Also has a lanyard hole in it. It's a decent striker on that side too. I mean, it has a 90 degree edge on it, so you can get down there and use it for a ferro rod striker. Like I said, the the many things that this just accidentally ended up being used for was you know you could see that recess in there. If you're using the bearing block right there. If you're using that for a bow drill set, you could set that recess right into your shin, just like that. You know, I'm not, in my opinion, I'm not very comfortable using knives as bearing blocks. It's just my safety little thing that I got going on. But it does work out really, really well to, to lay that into your shin, just like that. It gives you a lot of control and uh, balance when you're using this for a bow drill set. And we'll, maybe we'll uh, jump across this log and do a demonstration of that. But uh, this knife is one of my favorite knives. I bought this knife pretty much when it first came out. Um, actually, I, I bought it off of a friend that had this knife. And I loved this knife. I used it for a really, really long time. And then I found somebody that was in need of a knife. And I, at that time, I bought my PLSK-1. And uh, I'm not a collector. So if uh, I got a knife, like my PLSK-1, somebody needs a knife, you know, it's going to be passed on to somebody that needs a knife. He's a, a good home. I don't want a knife sitting on a shelf. He needs to go to a good home. So I went ahead and traded that knife off for some uh, other goods. But this is a absolute great bush knife, nice heavy. This is the quarter inch model. They also have a three sixteenths model that, that that they made as well for people that you know don't like the heavy you know have quarter inch steel uh, bush tool. But a lot of thought went into this knife. You know, a lot of a lot of effort went into this knife. I wouldn't exactly call this a, a chopper because I mean you know it's not that big of a knife, but it will get the job done as far as that goes. You know, any knife, any knife this big is going to do it. But, I mean, I wouldn't really necessarily chop too much with a knife like this. Maybe just small, little, tiny choppings to get branches off of trees and stuff like that. But it'll do the job that you need it to do, you know. You know, this isn't something that you're going to replace a, you know, you're trying something or replace an axe with or something like that. It's just not designed to chop like that. But um, it will work if you need to for minor chopping and things like that. But there's really no need to be chopping with, with a knife that small. But other than that, let's go over here and show you, like what I said, the uh, using it for a bow drill. And uh, I don't think we have a bow drill set. I'm not going to make one right now, but we'll show you the mechanics of how it works. All right, so like I said, I'm not exactly a huge fan of having an exposed blade out here using it as a bow drill, uh, bow drill a bearing block. It's just I'm not a very big fan of it, but this works exceptionally well as that. And the way the G10 is... The more that you use it for um, a bow drill set, the stouter that's going to be. And in fact, I was talking to the owner of Habilis, and if you put a little pine resin in there, it'll kind of make a, a shellac in there over time and just be just, you know, no friction at all. And that's important because the less friction that you impart up here means the more friction you're going to impart on your board where you're making your coal in the first place. <coughs> so, like I said, you know, that. Little recess so like I right said, there that little recess right there fits just perfectly into your shin, just like that. And you know, no matter what your uh, how high your spindle is or anything like that. And then it, it allows you to pretty much lock in. You know, I, I like to lock my hand in around on this side, but if you're doing it this style, it allows you to lock in really, really good with your shin, just like that. The problem with that is, is what if your spindle kind of moves a little bit? You know, you move real quick, and then you're going to stab yourself right in, this, in the uh, calf. That's the safety kind of catch that I, I don't really like. But I have seen people do it. I have seen people use it like that. But I just, I really don't kind of get into it. But I always say if you're going to, I always say if you're going to use those uh, bow drill divots on knives, uh, put the sheath on. Yeah, but I mean, when I was talking to the uh, the owners of a uh, habless bush tool they were talking about how you know convenient it is that you know it can be used like that but like i said you know if you're you know the, it's a, a bow drill sets a chaotic motion you know things are going to happen and what if that that spindle slips this way and you know you're, you're going so fast that you come right back into your your calf you well, know, that, well that's that because be 
That's probably because he hasn't <coughs> dealt with the YouTube Power Rangers safety force. That... Well, I mean, I'm pretty safety <laughs> conscious when I'm out in the woods. I've seen some pretty gnarly stuff happen as far as knives go. I mean, guys, we deal with really, really knife, sharp knives out there. And uh, obviously, you got kids tumbling all over the place. They could have stabbed themselves. <laughs> but, I mean, really, on a serious note, guys, you know, we're dealing with really, really sharp knives out in the bush. And you start, you know, cutting towards your fingers and stuff like that. Things are going to happen, and I've seen them happen. I've seen people not really listening to what I'm saying and carving spoons. And instead of holding a piece out like this, you know, and they're carving this way, they're carving it this way, you know, and slip, and there goes a finger. You know what I mean? And it, it's it's not a pretty sight, especially when it happens to a kid. Yeah, and I accidentally cut myself with that Condor Crotalis sitting uh -huh. right there. <laughs> you know, it just happens. It's going if you put, if you're using knives a lot, it's going to happen eventually. Well, yeah, you got to know the the safe ways to use a knife. You know, honestly, I always tell my students the safe way to use a knife is the techniques to where the knife isn't moving very much. You know, if I can get in here to a, a, an anchor point on my knee and move the wood, not the knife. You know, the wood's right here. I'm moving the wood, not the knife. You know, for instance, like this. You know, if I'm in here and the knife's not moving, but the wood is. You know, or just like a, a chest lever. You know. Knife's not moving, but the wood is, and I'm just using basically my chest muscles to, to uh, operate that knife. You know what I mean? Some people aren't comfortable using a reverse grip and being it that close to your core, but the spine of the knife is next to me, right here. The knife is actually going away from you. That's what how you use a chest lever. I grab the, grab the sheath there real quick. I think that's a that's a JRE leather sheath, isn't it? I, I don't know. I believe I it is. I don't have the uh, because they got two them. options you can choose from if you order a bush tool. You can either get this uh, leather sheath that can be worn as a dangler or a scout style, or you can yeah, op, opt for Kydex. They have um, a deluxe set of this that just is loaded with stuff. I mean, it's got like a little mini saw. You know, I suggest you guys go to their website and look at it. It's got all kinds of stuff. You can get the, the Matic Hunter that goes in the here. You know, it's just <laughs> the sheath ends up being like this big. It's just crammed, packed full of different kind of, you know, little snares and fishing kits or what have you. I'm not sure exactly what's in it, but like I said, there's just a ton of stuff that can be packed into that deluxe sheath. But that's the Habilis Bush Tool, guys. If you guys are interested in this, check it out at uh, www.habilisbushtool.com. A lot of people use the the ferro rod striker, and they use it like conventionally. You know, they put it th facing this direction, and you know, I hear a lot of things. You know, it actually it works as it is, but I hear a lot of people saying I really have a lot of trouble with my bush tool. I can't get it to, to throw a spark very well. That's because instead of using it like this, to flip it just like this, and that what that does is it captures all that spark in that recess and just funnels it straight down, just like that. And it does shoot a shower of lava. But just a little quick tip, if you will, for the Habilis Bush Tool. So there you go, guys. That is the Habilis Bush Tool. It's definitely a knife with a lot of uses, and it's definitely tough. I've never heard of anybody having any kind of problems with this knife. I mean, that's a good slab of steel. And as Will pointed out, especially if you're putting a secondary bevel on with a work sharp, uh, it'll take a razor sharp edge and having that good belly just makes it a really great slicer. Uh, it does, it is a little bit on the pricey side for some people. This thing runs about $199 on the Havilah's Bush Tools website, but you know, if the shoe fits, if that's something that you want, uh, what what might seem expensive to me is nothing to someone else. It's like, that's exactly what I want, you know, boom. Because I've definitely spent that much on knives before. It's all comes down to user preference. So there you go. I'm Chris from Prepared Mind 101. That's Will from Manus Outdoors. Make sure you check out his channel too. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Check out PreparedMind101.com. That's the Amazon outlet store. Help support the channel. And I'll be back with some more videos here soon. See you next time.